we each must become like fishermen and go out onto the dark ocean of our mind and let our nets down into that sea. What we're after are middle-sized ideas that are not so small that they're trivial and not so large that they're incomprehensible. We are looking for middle-sized ideas that we can wrestle into our boat and take back to the folks on shore and have fish dinner. You are an explorer and you represent our species and the greatest good you can do is to bring back a new idea because our world is endangered by the absence of good ideas. Our world is in crisis because of the absence of consciousness. So to whatever degree any of us can bring back a small piece of the picture and contribute it to the building of a new paradigm, we participate in the redemption of the human spirit. With these words from Terence McKenna, I am so happy to welcome you to this Psylolabs mini-series created with the psychedelic Voyager in mind. You are here not by accident, it's not a coincidence that brought you to this channel. You are here because you have felt the calling and have already or are soon perhaps to embark on a journey to new realms of consciousness. You feel called to dive in and swim and dance with the depth, light and darkness of your soul. Um, yeah, to redeem that truth and integrity of your spirit. And it might as well be that psychedelics are the means of transportation that you are considering to take. And I am here because I have cast out my net multiple times and I commit to keep bringing back as many fish as it takes to contribute to a better world. Welcome to this Shift Happens podcast, where we believe that it only takes a small shift to make a radical difference. Whether that's a shift in perspective, a shift in mindset, a shift in behavior, or in the way that we relate to each other and the world around us, join us each week as we discuss the art and science of meaningful transformations. From relationships to neuroscience and psychedelics, we explore existing and emerging tools that help us gain agency over our life. So without further ado, let's let magic unfold. Let's make shift happen. I like this quote from Ram Dass where he says that I would like my life to be a statement of love and compassion. And where it isn't, that's where my work lies. And that's something I really resonate with. I would like my life to be a statement of service and compassion. And there's nothing better that I can do or at least I believe that there is nothing better at this moment that I can do for humanity in that respect than work on myself, do the deeper digging into my psyche, figuring myself out, individuating. So the more parts of myself that I can help bring out of the dark and into the light, the more of myself that I become, the more that I individuate, the more that I feel I contribute to the greater whole. And I have been doing this for more than 20 years already, compelled initially by some traumatic experiences, driven by my, yeah, some inner torment and some suffering. I have been diving and voyaging using various means, tools and pathways uh, from psychotherapy to antidepressants to body work, generative trends, uh, emotional intelligence, coaching, entrepreneurship, energy healing. Eastern spiritual philosophy, yoga, meditation, and so on and so on and so on. To finally, about 10 years ago, have it all come together with plant medicine. And in that love, in that space holding, in that healing, in that home that I found there, with Father Iboga, Mother Ayahuasca, Sister Psilocybin, Grandfather Peyote, I was called by them, this strong, beautiful family of mine, to help other seekers find their way home to. Uh, just as it goes for any hero's journey, I initially resisted that call, going through the typical skepticism, self-doubt, and, you know, the imposter syndrome, and, of course, the painful but much-needed mind games. To finally now, 
have come to the point where I can no longer delay or justify the postponement of answering to that call. So today, in addition to being an author, entrepreneur, and consultant, I'm also a psychedelic guide. So what I do is hold spaces for a select group of psychedelic voyagers, mainly focusing on psilocybin. During a session, you can think of me or someone like me as the ground control in an airport tower. I'm always there to receive messages and queries from the flying aircrafts, always ready to help and navigate the course, um, always to help, ready to help reach uh, your destination. But you are the pilots. You are flying your own aircraft. You have your own flight plan, your own goals, your own destination, your own intention, your own experience. Um, the psychedelic guide in this case, so is like the ground control, always there, ever waiting to be of service to you. So through the, this work, I learned that I love gathering fellow travelers in sacred safe spaces and containers where we learn, play, grow, cry, and celebrate each other's journeys, um, the journey of remembering who we are. So this podcast is a series that is dedicated to my tribe and the voyagers who are already flying in the radius, in my radius. And those that are now, as we speak, gravitating to us. Here, I'm aiming to elucidate some of the tools that can help us all gain agency over this journey and understand the switchboard and controls of your aircraft. Um, and I don't exclude that a blueprint or a map might emerge as I continue to publish. And Actually, I really hope that that would be the case. And I say yes to it. May I remain open and discerning to all that is coming to light through me. May my words be purified to radical truth through my own heart and crystallized to radical authenticity through my own voice so that it may reach and move the hearts and minds of the people who are meant to receive this and hear this. May they bring us closer to actualizing a world of radical love, a world of connection, and a world of peace. May anything that is of importance now come to the surface. Anything that can help us navigate this mystical, magical, mind-blowing thing called life. So that we may together service humanity best. As I was setting this series up, uh, a part of me wanted to make a comprehensive, detailed, step-by-step -step instructions manual to guide anyone uh, through the most effective and well-organized expansion possible. Um, yeah, practically thinking, how can I equip the world? And that's the masculine linearity in me, which I have learned to trust and rely on so much. And yet another part of me simply wants to say to anyone preparing for this, you have got this, you've got this, you, you have it, you have it under your belt. Yeah, cheering you on and promising you that you have already done the hardest part when you said yes to the journey and uh, that it's uh, actually now in the hands of your spirit and inner guidance to take care of the rest. And that's the accepting feminine wisdom inside of me, which I'm overjoyed to feel pulsing through my veins and my heart. And I declare my commitment to both and allow them to marry right here on this podcast through me uh, from this day onward um, and forevermore. So... What are some typical steps of a psychedelic experience? And what are the GPS directions for wandering through the landscape of your awareness? What do you need to stay safe as you're slacklining on the outer extremities of your consciousness? When thinking of preparing for it, uh, it helps to think as, uh, of it as if you would be preparing for a long trip in the wilderness. You know, the substance that you are consuming is only a means of transportation. And just as each means of transportation has different properties, for example, an airplane can take you to your destination faster, 
a bike is the most economical way of, of moving around. Walking is perhaps the safest. Uh, in the same way, it's not only psychedelic substances that allow you to have transcendent experiences, obviously. Um, yoga, sensory deprivation, um, any disciplined um, undertaking um, or exercise, meditation, and even some spontaneous occurrences are also a means to that end. Choosing to travel to the realms of consciousness through a psychedelic experience means that on an either conscious or a subconscious level, you are committing to a very fast and supercharged and super powerful journey. By saying yes, you are declaring that you are ready to break free from your ordinary patterns and structures. Letting go of an old part of yourself or an outdated version of yourself, shedding a skin that no longer serves you, that is sitting too tight upon you like a straight jacket. So what are some of the reasons why you would undertake a psychedelic experience? Well, let's have a look at uh, what some of my clients have to say. In the last few months, I started to become more curious about psychedelics and the kind of psychological, spiritual insights they can bring. Aho, this is uh, someone looking for breakthroughs. Mm, I had one or two meaningful experiences with other substances and would like to explore more. Exploration. To expand and improve my approach to my work as a therapist. Aho, I think therapy is definitely bound to benefit from using the, 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 the breakthroughs that we are finding with psychedelic substances. It certainly has helped me, not only in my coaching, but also in my um, consulting services. To work through my own anxiety and anger. Yeah, healing and therapy are a known uh, reason why so many people are uh, coming to this medicine. And it is known that one night of ayahuasca is uh, equal to 15 years of therapy. And I stand as testimony to that. I've been going to therapy for years and years and years. Traditional psychotherapy and nothing has had such an impact and such a rapid transformative power on me as a night with ayahuasca. My first experience was actually ibogaine, but oh, I will go through the various types of psychedelics and when and why you would use a, a specific one uh, at a later stage. Here's what another client is saying. I have done a lot of inner work over the five, uh, past five years and feel it would be an incredible next step for me. Yeah, so personal development. I work in the creative field and I believe this may amplify my creativity. Certainly. I want to connect with myself on a deeper level. I feel this experience will support me on my journey of discovering my true, authentic self. And do we need more authenticity in the world? Say yes, 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 yes. I've done psychedelics a few times in a more uncontrolled setting and have begun to take it on myself to do this more intentionally. Always uh, getting quite powerful results and treating my anxiety. I've been curious for a while about how this could go uh, in a more controlled guiding, guided setting. And this is the part that I love the most about doing psychedelics in a safe container uh, with the guidance of a qualified practitioner uh, or someone who knows what you're going through, someone who knows who's navigated those landscapes already before and who can either handhold you or give you as much space as you need at any moment in time, but who is at the same time always there and you can rely upon. Super, super important. And I have witnessed some of the most uh, incredible healings happening um, in uh, group settings. So... Yeah, these were some of the most common whys um, as they were given to me by my clients. 
Um, and, you know, of course, apart from a why, apart from your intention and your desired outcome, you are probably sitting with so many more questions such as, hey, but is psilocybin the best substance for me? Is it ayahuasca? Where do I go? Where do I begin? Which one is most suitable for the condition that I'm trying to address? Um, do I go solo? Or do, I bring, do I bring friends? Um, do I do this in a controlled setting? Do I work with a guide? Do I work without a guide? What do I bring along with me on this journey? What kind of preparatory work do I have to do? Um, uh, what do I choose to leave behind is another important one that we perhaps should spend more time looking into. And this is exactly what this series is about. It's here to help guide you through that process of preparing you for the most amazing and fantastic psychedelic voyage. Consider it your own private guidebook. And I'll take you through some of the steps that are great to take to ensure that um, you make the most of your experience. But at the core, at the foundation, I thought it is great to use some kind of a framework. So I applied myself to the book of uh, The Psychedelic Experience, which was written by Timothy Leary, Ralph Metzner, and Richard Alpert, is, who is also known as Ram Dass, that I quoted in earlier. Um, the book merges the psychedelic experience with the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I have read the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And um, yeah, it, it is clearly concealing a deeper message than is obvious to uh, the first look. Um, as Lama Govinda indicates in the introduction, the Book of the Dead is... Just as much the book of the dying as it is the book of the living. And death, as is interpreted in the manual, is not only of the body. Actually, I felt it, the death that was discussed was much more, um, um, much, a lot less about the body than um, symbolically represented in the book. So, describing the experiences to be a uh, expected at the moment of death during the intermediate uh, phase of that um, uh, lasts for about um, 49 I believe days and that was uh, yeah 7 times 7 so 49 days and um, during the rebirth into another bodily frame the book uh, as I said is easily misinterpreted as a guide for the afterlife but concealed beneath the layers of symbolism uh, the meaning of it, and mainly the instructions, are uh, all about removing the ego for the purpose of experiencing enlightenment. And that is easily uh, overlooked when you're reading the book. Um, and uh, yeah, the Tibetan Book of the Dying, it was not intended for actually general reading. It was designed to be understood only by those who were to be initiated uh, personally or by a guru into um, the Buddhist mystical doctrines, um, into the pre-mortem death rebirth experience. Those doctrines have been kept a secret for many, many centuries because, uh, well, they were afraid that upon naive or careless application, they could cause harm. And um, when uh, the authors of psychedelic experience uh, published this practical interpretation for the use of psychedelic sessions um, where they are merging Western use of psychedelics where, which are actually originating in South America with the Eastern philosophies and in a sense uh, thereby breaking with the tradition of secrecy for of the Lama and Gurus. A very bold undertaking. So as such there is so much mention of the ego dissolution, which we will also dedicate one whole episode to because this is the biggest and the hardest part in the whole journey. And it is um, bound to happen to everyone. So um, breaking free of the personality, breaking free of the persona, letting 
uh, doing away with the mask and the games that we play. Um, so what is it that you feel you might need when embarking on a psychedelic journey? Um, share in the comments or on Instagram. Um, and please join us again the same time next week where, where we will dive deeper into a next chapter. And I'm thinking that's going to be about set and setting. And for now, uh, so much love to you. And I wish you many, many positive shifts this week. May lots of great shifts happen for you in the week ahead. Till next time.